Lecture AP 1.4, this lecture is on determining the limiting reagent between two chemicals um, that products in a chemical reaction. Often we are given two uh, values for each reactant, at least two, and we want to find how much of the product we make. This is a core AP problem. Okay, pops up a lot but is certainly a core problem in chemistry in general because given a certain amount of each of these reactants, how much of each do we need to make a reaction occur? So this is an important piece of information or important chemical principle, at least analytically. So in any case, you had this uh, last year and you certainly had it in your take-home uh, summer assignment. I saw a lot of people do very well with that. So uh, this is just a background lesson to give you my voice on how to do this. Okay, so first thing is I have a chemical reaction, and I'm using the chemical reaction, at least the balance coefficients that we're going to have to put here to get information about one compound to eventually get information about others. In this case, what we're going to do is we do a stoichiometry problem on the uh, ammonia to figure out how much oxygen we need, and then we do something backwards. We're going to find out how much oxygen we need to make all of the ammonia. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some stoic problems. We're going to go from one chemical to the other. Well, my friends, we need a balanced chemical reactions anytime we do that. So when you sit here and balance this, okay, you're going to get four, okay, five. And again, I'm not going to walk you through balancing. That's a skill, essential skill that we should have already. And the idea here is the law of conservation of mass, same type and same number of atoms on both sides. So what I'm going to do is start with 2.50 grams of ammonia. And I'm going to figure out how many grams of oxygen, okay, is needed to make all of my ammonia disappear. So I'm going to get rid of grams because grams is a how heavy number. And these ratios are not by how heavy, they're by how many. So of course I'm going to go to moles and I'm going to get rid of my ammonia. The formula mass of ammonia is 17.03 from past problems and just by adding up all the atomic masses that's an easy skill so we're gonna move on okay that gives me grams I'm sorry that gives me moles and now I'm going to um, do my stoic problem in terms of what makes it a stoichiometry problem is the mole ratio so I know that there's four ammonias and notice I'm using the ammonias on the bottom so it cancels out to, for five oxygens up top so my ammonia cancels and now I have moles of oxygen and you know some people think differently and they'll work from moles before they go to grams I'm just gonna go back to grams but there's certainly a way to do this and just compare the moles when you're stressed for time especially when you get toward the uh, an AP type or SAT2 type of question but we'll stay here and finish the problem out in in grams so one mole is how many grams of O2 and you're gonna get uh, uh, 32 Okay, I guess they, they round off the 16 in the reference table. Okay, and let's go find those grams. So my notice my moles cancel, I'm left with grams of O2. So let's put that in the calculator. And I'll put my 2.50 uh, divide by 17.03 times 5 divide by 4 times 32. And I get 5.8719er. Just put some numbers in here. Don't really care about the sig figs because I'm just determining who is from this math. Who is this limiting ratio? So 5.8, uh, those 7.2. I'm just rounding off. Grams of O2. Now, understand what we just found. We found the grams of O2, all right, that is necessary to make all of this ammonia react. Now, if we evaluate and I'm going to change my ink here. Let's evaluate this here for a second. So my 2.5 grams of ammonia would completely disappear if I have 5.872 grams of O2. Well, what, how, how much do I actually have? I have 2.85. So if you think with me, we do not have, an, we do not have enough um, oxygen to make all of the ammonia react. We need, I always wrote this last year, what we need is on this side, and what we have is on this side. Okay, so we need 5.872 grams, and we only have 2.87, so we don't have enough. 
there that means that ammonia okay does not completely react which means it doesn't all get used up which means some of it remains and it must be the excess chemical the chemical that is in higher amount and that means that my limiting reagent is my oxygen now what is the limiting reagent again when you stop and think about it, a limiting reagent is the chemical that limits the whole process because it runs out first it's the one that runs out first it's got the based on the ratio and how many we start with it's the chemical that stops the reaction cold in its tracks because it's in lower quantities so we found out that ammonia doesn't all react from our analysis from what we have and what we need from O2 okay now if you don't see that let's do it again let's do um, a stoic problem sometimes you don't have to do one but I'll do a second one to show you that both um, stoic problems will give us the same result however maybe a little differently so um, let's start with oxygen now so 2.85 grams of O2 okay I'm gonna get rid of O2 uh, not, we're gonna get rid of grams sorry and one mole is equal to 32 grams and we're going to get rid of O2 we want ammonia in this case so if you notice they're flipped and there are four ammonias notice I'm getting that from the balanced chemical reaction to five O2's okay and then I know we could stop here for moles because the grams go and we left with moles and we can evaluate it that way but we're gonna go back for good practice here go back to grams and one mole, notice I put this on the bottom to get rid of this mole here using dimensional analysis. We want grams. And we're going to use our 17.03. And we get rid of moles. And what do we have? We should have grams of ammonia needed to make all of the oxygen disappear. That's what we're trying to find. So let's put that in a later calc calculator. 2.85, okay, divide by 32, okay, times 4. Divide by 5 times 17.03, and I get, where am I, oh, 1.2133 grams. Now, what does this mean? This is how much ammonia is needed to make all of my oxygen disappear. Well, how much ammonia do I have? I have 2.50 grams. I need 1.2, so you can clearly see we have more than enough ammonia to make all of O2 disappear. So O2 gets to disappear. When it disappears, it stops the reaction. So both stoic problems lead us to the same conclusion that oxygen stops the reaction because it's the one that runs out, and ammonia is in excess. Okay? So sometimes you can just do with one, sometimes you need two. All right, so again, that's the idea here. Now, how much excess reactant remains after the limiting reagent is completely consumed, after the reaction stops? Well, uh, 2.85 completely goes away when you have 1.2133 grams of ammonia. So we have 2.50. So 2.50 minus 1.2133. Okay, what's that going to give me? So 2.50 minus 1.2133, and that's going to give me wow, 1.29. Uh, okay, grams of ammonia, which is my excess, based on the numbers I'm using. Okay, how many grams of NO2 form? Okay, well now they're asking how much of the product should we expect? at this point. Well, now that you know who your limiting reagent is, you're going to start there. Now, you're going to start your stoic pro st problem with the limiting reagent because that's the one that completely gets consumed. If you were to use 2.5 grams of ammonia and then figure out how many grams of NO, you would overestimate how much product you remain that would be produced because not all of the 2.5 grams, only 1.2. Now, some of you might think, well, can I start with 1.21 grams of ammonia? You certainly can. So you're going to start with exactly how much of the excess got used, or you start with exactly the limiting reagent's mass. Either one, these values here are the ones that completely get consumed. I'm just going to keep it simple and always start with the limiting reagent. So 2.85 grams of O2. Let me get rid of my grams to go to moles. 
Notice the fancy abbreviation for mole, you take the E away. Isn't that great? It's kind of like Mississippi and taking one I off, okay? In any case, 32 grams is my formula mass. And this kind of stoic problem should seem very simple to you now. Okay, it was hard at one point last year. Okay, and of course, we didn't get rid of moles yet. We're going to get rid of O2. So O2 is on the bottom. You want no NO. And we want, uh, what's the, it's four no's for every five oxygens. I'm just getting that from the balanced chemical reaction. The O2s disappear. And of course, I'm going to get rid of my mole, which I did too early. There it is, to get grams of nitrous oxide. Okay, and my formula mass, when I'm uh, 14 plus 16 is approximately, or it definitely is 30. Okay, that's the numbers I'm using here. And uh, it's my formula mass. So what do I get for grams of NO. Okay, I do my math, 2.85 divided by 32 times 4 divided by 5 times 30, and I get 2.14 grams. And you get the same answer if you started with exactly how much of the excess that was used. All right, what is the theoretical yield? Well, we just kind of solved that, didn't we? Theoretical yield is how much we would have we get exactly assuming no error and that's what the pencil and paper analytical stuff gives us. So the theoretical yield is 2.14. To get a percent yield you would take that 2.14 as your bottom number, your actual experimental value times 100 obviously. Okay, but I just want the theoretical yield, same number. Okay, so number two, just another uh, example here for you to practice if you want to. Okay, um, and I certainly have the key in the share drive. All right, and we add a little twist here of using gas now in our in our um, slick problem. So certainly go over that. And um, I would like you to certainly do number three. Okay, where is number three? Let me show you that. And this one, of course, you're going to have to balance as well. Okay, and now we're dealing with molar values here and try this one uh, and notice the little twist here is it's kind of like the other page now I'm giving you what I'm giving you percent yield to begin with all right and I'm trying to figure out who the limiting reagent is except now I'm dealing with volumes and molar solutions and you can certainly get moles from that okay and I'll, I'll leave that alone but try this one for size okay and I may put up a, um, a lecture on this one but try that first Okay, and finding a limiting region is certainly something that you should be able to do, especially number two. Okay, and that's end of lecture 1.8P 1.4.